Greetings. My name is Matt Warnay. As part of the Summer Undergraduate Research and Engineering Program, I worked under Professor Eric Johnson in the Computational Flow Physics Lab at the University of Michigan. My work dealt with cavitation bubble dynamics. Here is a brief introduction to cavitation. When liquids, like water, are subjected to heat, they boil when their temperature rises above a critical value called the boiling point. Through boiling, a liquid is vaporized, meaning it transfers from a liquid state to a gaseous state. There is, however, another way in which liquids can be vaporized. When a liquid is subjected to a decrease in pressure, it will vaporize in a process called cavitation when the pressure falls below a critical value. The cavitation bubbles that form can behave violently, undergoing rapid oscillations and forming shock waves. Although the cavitation process was first identified in the 19th century, finding how to best model cavitation bubble dynamics is still a field of active research. As cavitation finds an increasing number of medical applications, it becomes more and more important to fully understand cavitation phenomenon. I began this summer by using the rayleigh plesset equation to model the dynamics of gas bubbles in water subjected to pressure drops of various forms. The blue curve measures non-dimensional bubble radius versus time, while the green curve shows the non-dimensional pressure function. Note how in the span of 10 microseconds, the bubble collapses and rebounds five times. These collapses are particularly violent, showing that the bubble shrinks down to nearly 1% of its initial radius. I also compared several models that give higher orders of accuracy than the rayleigh plesset equation and that account for additional factors such as compressibility. Other important factors in cavitation bubble dynamics are the effects of heat and mass transfer in and around the bubble. I studied a reduced order model that approximates heat and mass transfer effects using a constant coefficient for each. By varying these coefficients, I found that the maximum radius of bubble growth was much more dependent on heat transfer effects than diffusive effects. This means that it is more important to have an accurate measure of the heat transfer coefficient than it is of the mass transfer coefficient under certain conditions. Finally, I investigated cavitation bubble dynamics in an elastic medium. In medical applications, the medium in which cavitation takes place is not normally a pure fluid. An important property of these tissue-like mediums is their elasticity. By using a damped harmonic oscillator model, I found that for small bubble wall oscillations, the value of elasticity for which a cavitating bubble is critically damped is almost entirely dependent on the properties of the material. In the future, I hope to investigate a model that combines heat and mass transfer effects as well as accounts for elasticity in order to answer pressing questions about the way cavitation bubbles behave in tissue. Thank you for your time, and good night.